بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي لحبت في الله may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our affairs easy and bless the muslims everywhere and protect us from كل سوء ومكروه and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتابه الكريم وتعاون على بر وتقوى ولا تعاون على اثم وعدوان and cooperate in righteousness and piety and do not cooperate in sinfulness in enmity and one of the ways that we can cooperate is by advising one another in goodness and in righteous affairs and taqwa ahabatifillah fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is when we adhere to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and avoiding those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to cooperate. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ad-deen al nasiha that this, uh, the religion is advice, it is sincere advice. So the Muslims should advise one another, strengthen one another, and help one another. Ahabatifillah, one of the things that plagues our youth and a way in which we have to cooperate with one another is by advising one another in some of the dangers and pitfalls that the youth find. And all of us at one time or another were youth as we progress through this life and we get older. Uh, we can reflect on those times of times of great difficulty in the things that we faced. And one of the trials and tribulations that many of our youth face is the struggle of just being walking straight, walking the straight path and avoiding zina, avoiding fornication, avoiding masturbation and avoiding uh, adultery and any of those uh, activities that are with those. All of those things are haram. All of those things are prohibited in Islam. And they have different levels of prohibition, meaning they have different levels of sinfulness. They're all prohibited, but they have different levels of sinfulness. For example, masturbation obviously is not like committing zina and adultery. And the one who's married, who does these things or has been married, is not like the one who has never been married and falls into that. So the youth of today, they struggle with this, these tests. There are many reasons for this, and this is not the time to get into details with those things, but we want to look at how we can help one another or how we can help ourselves avoid these things. Because young, our young men, they're in the schools and our young girls, they're in the schools and they are mixing and they are tested with this every day. Of course, the prophetic prescription, which is the best, is fasting. Because the Prophet Sallallahu said that uh, fasting is prescribed for the Ya Ma'ashar al-Shabaab min istata'a minkum and to zawaj and to zawaj whoever from amongst you the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi addressed the youth O youth whoever from amongst you uh, can uh, marry then he should do so and if he is unable to do so then he should fast this is the prophetic prescription marriage and fasting if one is unable to marry, and they're young, and they don't have the means, and what have you, and the maturity and the other things that it takes required to uh, establish a family, then of course fasting. If fasting you find is also difficult for you, and that you also find yourself still bombarded by those thoughts. Some people to such an extent that even during their prayer, they see the opposite uh, sex, and they see the... Uh, without getting explicit in Karamakum Allah, they see all of those things uh, and they are enticed and they find it very difficult to control themselves even while fasting. Ahabat Tifillah, this is nothing new. But how can we deal with this? First and foremost, fasting is prescribed. So continual fasting. Fasting will take out some of that shahwa. Another thing that we, we, we could do is for one, whenever you are bombarded by this, it's a sign that there are other things that are going on. That more than likely, you're watching television, you're watching uh, prohibited things on television, you um, 
are involved in something which is increasing those thoughts, which is increasing your bombardment. Because it is difficult enough in these societies to remain uh, chaste and to keep your honor and dignity by staying away from the muharramat. But you have to look at yourself and analyze yourself. What are you looking at on the, on the internet? If it requires for you to go into the internet and block all of your pictures, make it so you cannot you know, put filters on your internet, then do so in order to safeguard yourself. Because it, is self, it becomes evident that we are putting other stimulus into us which makes the matters more difficult, makes it more difficult. So check your surroundings. Are you uh, mixing excessively with the opposite sex? Are you not lowering your gaze and Allah has commanded you to do so? You have to take those safeguards. There's just no easy way about it. There's the only ways and means of dealing with this fitna is by lowering your gaze, doing those things Allah has prescribed. Fasting, lower your gaze, and what you're looking at, if you're watching movies, if you're watching other things that which are even worse than movies or, or, or the, even the worst types of movies, then you have to stop that. You have to remove that from your regimen. You have to take that out of your life because it, the more you do that, and then the more you're, you're fighting yourself, you're fighting your nafs, and you're going to fight your nafs, but you're fighting a losing battle because you're putting that negative stimulus in, in you. And pornography, a is an incredibly addictive drug. I say that it's a drug, that it's not just, it's a drug and it's a sickness. And this <coughs> sickness will continue to prey and plague you. As the, the people who are professionals in these, these fields of counseling and, and psychology and so forth will let you know that a person is never really overcomes their addiction. And pornography will come to you in your weakest and strongest times. But if you ever open that door to that sin, that it will be a very difficult sin to remove from you. Because you'll always be inclined to looking at those things that entice you. So you have to do everything possible to shut the doors. If it requires that when you're in uh, that you when you're on the internet that you're in company of people, then do so, because this thing runs through your blood, as the shaitan runs through your blood and goes through your body and circulates and entices you and pleases you for a temporary moment, and then brings you misery and sinfulness and displeasure with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to strive your utmost to avoid those environments. Be in the, the environments of good, do everything possible to be around good company. And do not uh, avoid being alone, and especially alone with these various types of technologies that can bring your destruction. That is some simple advice, and we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it uh, beneficial for us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to practice what we preach and avoid the muharramat and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm al-nafi rizqan tayyibu amil al-mutakabbilin wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad